you know, I've always thought if I got pulled up by the cops with my condition and the guy asked, excuse me, sir, do you know how fast you were going, that I could fully reply with, well, do you know how long I've got? And I'd be like, bro, if you knew how long I'd got, you'd be going this fast as well. It's a joke, no one. Don't actually bloody speed. I always get stiff like that. I'm a, I've told that joke once before and everyone's like, you think it's all right for you to speed because you got cancer? I'm like, bro, it's a joke for God's sake. Humor doesn't go well <laughs> in the new in the new environment, I guess, of politically correct. But today what I want to talk about is I guess what you can and can't say to people with cancer, especially your friends and your family, um, or probably actually more so if you're just a random fucking like you don't know this person from a bar of soap, and I cop a lot of it. But I think the first thing I want to premise in this is if you've been diagnosed, it is very uncomfortable for everyone, um, especially those who haven't had exposure, I guess, to someone with cancer before, and not everyone has. Um, and it is very easy because you're going through a very hard time in your life to be, I guess, overly sensitive to it. And I 100% when I, in my first months of diagnosis was so overly sensitive to like anything said to me about it that, I'd lost friends for life. I've lost friends um, and whatever. So I guess it's a way look at it logically and, you know, cop it on the chin a little bit and move on. Like just say, oh, yeah, thank you and, and fuck off. Like, you know, you can just think that person's a dickhead in your head. It's not worth burning a bridge for. Uh, but the first one, and I get this a little bit, the, the first one for me is when someone says chin up. I'm like, <laughs> chin up feels like something you say to a kid when they're having a sook about, you know, something at a bloody barbecue. You know, oh, chin up, mate. Not to an adult who had something that's going to kill them. I, I think chin up is a little bit like you paying off how serious it is by, oh, come on, get better. Um, and the other one, I guess, that goes in turn with that is the, oh, well, you know, I could walk across the street and be hit by a bus tomorrow. And the best answer I've ever heard back to that is, well, yeah, but it's like I've got a fucking bus following me around and it's going to run over me at some point. The whole I could get hit by a bus tomorrow thing, it, it almost tries to level the person suffering down to you of like, oh, we're equals. Well, everyone's equals, we're all going to fucking die. But, you know, like I said before, this person has a bus following them, trying to get them to fucking kill them and they're doing everything to try and miss it where you're relying on you know, the one in a million chance it could happen. You're not equal. Um, and I guess the next one before I step into it is the whole, oh, you have a bucket list. Um, I, this one, you know, may be appropriate depending on the situation, but saying to them, oh, do you have a bucket list? It's almost like you've said that they, you are going to die. What do you want to do before you die? Rather than, you know, what are you doing next? Um, you know, it's almost like accepting that death. And that's why I per I have never had a bucket list, but I've always sent, uh, always seeked purpose of, you know, with this, what purpose can I have? Um, and then we step into the classics of, oh, well, my friend's cousin's brother ate this fucking root and got cured. Like, you know, I've spoken to so many oncologists and neurosurgeons and everything about a lot of this stuff and it's all it's all myth. I'm not saying it does or doesn't work, but is there medical science to back it up? Fucking no. Um, and especially if it's not, oh yeah, I ate this and got cured, but if it's, oh, this random person on the internet I read, well, this oncologist has been, you know, studying for his whole life to do this and his whole purpose is to cure these tumours versus this bloody internet article you wrote or read. Um, and I, I guess the, the have you tried this diet, this or that, I feel at least myself, I, I want to listen to an oncologist um, or, or a surgeon, someone who's been doing this. Uh, and that links into the next one I get a lot, which is, well, the government has a cure. They're just suppressing it for control of population or whatever bloody reason, but the government has a cure. Um, as long as there is rich and powerful people dying of cancer, the government does not have a cure. If you look up the people that have died of cancer from vice presidents bloody Steve Jobs, you know, all, all these people. If the government really did have a cure, do you think they would suppress that? Or if Big Pharma, the Big Pharmaceuticals had a cure, why would they suppress it? Why, why wouldn't they release it? They could make, the, the money they would make on it would be insane. Um, I've looked at some numbers that look at um, if you could cure the kids that died of cancer, 
and they lived you know, a full life of 80 years, how much tax revenue would that make? And that tax revenue would is more so it, it would be like um, that much that you would you if you could cure it, you'd put every single asset you had into it. Um, it's just it's just bullshit. I guess the conspiracy needs to fit the size of the problem and you can look at how um, the psychology behind conspiracies as far as the conspiracy needs to fit the level of it. So the conspiracy of didn't go on the moon, the conspiracy is large because the moon's a large thing um, and it needs to equal it. So the conspiracy of cancer needs to be massive because cancer is a massive thing and a massive problem. Um, and I guess I could go on about that for forever. But I guess the other thing is imparting your faith on someone and this is probably the most common for me. And I think it's a, I think it's a bit rich, and I think it's a bit of a prick act to say to someone who's gone through chemo, gone through radio, had surgery, all this stuff. Just believe in name your bloody religion character, whatever one. And I'm not against religion at all. Um, personally, I'm not religious, but the amount of stuff I get of, you know, give yourself to Jesus Christ rather than doing these drugs and this and that will. No, why would, why would I give myself to someone who, if if exists, did this to me? Is the reason I'm got this disease? But I think even if you are religious, you wouldn't want to hear from uh, an, another religion saying, "Hi, hey, yeah, give yourself to Muhammad or this or that." I, I think imparting your faith on someone, you know, I'm all about if you can ask, "Oh, are you are you religious?" and you know, whatever goes there. But and and then some of the comments I get from religious people about well, you're suffering because you're not a believer. Well, that just goes against your whole thing about being for peace. And that's and it's from every religion I've got that, but mostly, you know, the most common ones. Um, you know, people that you think are you're like, well, wouldn't you preach, you know, happiness for all? But no, apparently I'm going to burn and <laughs> have this tumour because of it. But, you know, and I think on a closing note of things not to say, it's a very sensitive time for you all. And don't be overly sensitive to it. But speaking to a friend with cancer, you can't say anything wrong. And if you do, just apologise to them. And if someone apologises to you and you're suffering from cancer, accept it. You know, it, it's it's awkward. Fucking hell. I deal with this every single day of my life and I still don't know, really know what to bloody say. Um, just be there for each other. It's a hard time. Um, but thank you. I really appreciate it. Easy, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, I can't. Yeah.